Okay, hello, welcome again. Um, this uh, video we're going to be covering um, structs or records in C++, so simple structures. Um, in particular, I just want to go over a few things. Uh, we'll just look at uh, declaring them and then accessing you know, how to use the structures, declare them and use them. Uh, and then a few details about how structures work, um, assigning them, comparing them, things like that. Um, and then I've probably spent most of my time time talking about structures, passing those to functions, and also about how you, how arrays and structures, uh, you can use them together, how they're related, things like that. All right, so as usual, um, I will post this uh, example source code with the uh, this video for, my, uh, for, for people in my class. Um, I'm going to be using an example structure called a house type here, so let me go up and look at the definition of that, all right? So, so we're going to work on, uh, sorry, we're going to work on part one here. Um, um, how you declare to define a structure, okay? So I should have said uh, before I go on here, um, structures are uh, collections of data of different types. So kind of a fancy word for that is, is we could say they're non they're collections of non-homogeneous data, okay? So that, that's different from the array that we just looked at uh, just a while ago. So arrays are uh, a collection of, of items all of the same type. So if you have an array of 50 integers, they're all integers are all the same type. So when you create a struct, a structure, a record, um, like my um, um, house type here, um, it's a collection. You can have uh, all kinds of different types in there. You can have any type that you want that's a valid uh, C++ type. Now, they don't have to be simple type. So um, this is supposed to be an example of something like if you're building a real estate, app, real estate application, uh, you might have an, uh, a record or a structure in order to keep track of all the information about the houses that you're selling or that you're listing at your company. So, um, I mean, you know, a structure can have simple uh, built-in uh, C types, so integers and doubles, so we got things to keep track of or to describe the number of bedrooms and the price of the house and what the property tax are. Uh, but you can have other... Um, um, types in there. You can have strings. You can have other user-defined types. So uh, instead of using a string to describe the style of the house, last or uh, a while ago we looked at enumerated types. So we could define an enumerated type for our house style to keep track of that so that we only have the valid kinds of, of, of styles uh, of houses that we want to keep track of. Cape Cod, country, colonial, things like that. Um, I don't show an example of it in here, but you can actually have other structs as, as members of structs. So you should read the textbook about that. But uh, I can define another uh, struct, like uh, a, a good one. If I was going to uh, extend this video longer, I would define a structure for like an address that contains uh, member fields like um, the street address 1, street address 2, uh, an integer for the zip code, stuff like that. And I would have the address, uh, the address type as a member of, of, of my house type, and, and that's where I would put the actual physical address of my house, okay? So that, that's the basic, I mean, the syntax, it's, it's, it's similar, it's not quite the same as the, as the enumerated type, so it's almost the same, um, you know, you give the struct keyword, you give the name of the data type you're creating, house type in this case, um, and then you list the, the member, data member item, so instead of a comma, um, you, you put uh, semicolons. But, yeah, I mean, it is different from enumerated types. So these are actual variables that can hold information as opposed to enumerated type where you're just defining a list of constants for that enumerated type, all right? So that's that's the uh, the definition of it. So let's look at accessing it. So I'll go ahead and build this and run it. And I've learned from doing these videos before, we'll just step through this so we can we can watch them one by one as we're running the code and uh, seeing the output happen. So, so I'll see if it builds. Uh, it's already up to date and I'll go ahead and, and run it. So we stopped at our first breakpoint before I did anything. Um, step over was F10. So I'll use that to step over. So, um, oh, so again, like an enumerated type, um, when, we did, when we created this house type, Structure, we can now create variables of house type. So I created my house here, 
Um, you know, I, I, I can create as many types of variables and give them different names. So these are instances of my structure. And this is how you actually access those member items of, of, of my house. So uh, remember the, my, the house type had style, address, this was all the fields that I had in there. So the style was, uh, a, was one of those enumerated types, was the, the house type. So I have to assign uh, a numerator type like country or ranch to um, um, the, the style member fields. These are known as member fields or just fields of the record. Um, um, so there's the address was a string and then some integer, number of bedrooms, things like that. So we're just assigning the values into these member variables of the struct. Okay? Um, and the syntax for reading, so this, this is in order to write things in, so, so to, to change the data. So the, 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 the syntax for reading things back out of a structure is the same. You just use the period. So you give your structure variable name, dot, and then the member name that you want to read back out. So if I want to read out the address, um, I do dot address. And we, give, we get I live at whatever string I put in for the address. Uh, if I want to get the, the tax out, um, I just do dot tax. I get out the, uh, the, the tax there, all right? Um, so, like I, like I said, I mean, you, now house type is, is a new data type we added to the language, so I can create other, I can create as many variables of house type as I want. So, we create another house called my beach house. So, um, this is the second um, item I was going to discuss then. Um, the, um, um, so, assignment is defined between, uh, uh variables of a struct, okay? So this doesn't work for arrays. I, I probably didn't mention this in the last video. So you can't assign, do, do a, a, an equal to assign all the values of one word, array into another. It, it, uh, nothing happens if you do that. Uh, or it might be a syntax error or you know, the compi compiler error if you're trying to do that. But for structures, that's why. It's, and, and it does what you would expect. So if I, if I assign my house, my beach house equals my house, uh, it's actually making copies. So assignment um, um, like this is uh, is is um, is by value, not by reference. So so a copy of all of these these values is copied from my house into my beach house, and um, then so you know if I out now if I access my beach house's address, uh, you see it's it's the same one two three Main Street. But this is a copy, so, so yeah, assignment is by value, a copy is made, so it's not by reference. So uh, if I change the address of my beach house um, from Commerce to uh, South Padre Island uh, and step over, now if we look at the address of my house, it's still 123 Main Street, the first house. But if we look at my beach house, um, it has the address of the, the one that I just assigned, okay? So just, uh, that's important to remember. So when you, if, if you ever do something like that, assign one structure into another, you're making a copy. So you got a completely new structure with all the same values, but if you, if you make a change to one, it won't affect the other after you've made the copy. So. Um, but you, you can do assignment between structures, but pretty much nothing else works at the structure level. So like, if, if I want to compare structures, I can compare individual fields. So I could, I could uh, try and check if the address of my house is the same as my beach house, and they're not anymore since I just assigned them, right? So they are different houses, right? Um, but, um, oh yeah, I, I skipped over that. So, so something like this wouldn't work. Um, so, let me set a break point right here. Um, so if I stop that, if, if we try and recompile this, You can hear, so you can already see that Visual Studio is 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 um, seeing that um, that this is an illegal operation. So, yeah. So the uh, you know again the the error message here is saying that that um, um, you can't do a comparison like that, and you can't do any other kind of uh, boolean uh, or relational operator less than greater than doesn't work. You have to compare individual um, members of the uh, of the um, of the structures if if you want to compare anything. So. All right, let me rebuild that. Um, and uh, we'll rerun. Uh, and I'll come down my breakpoint where we left off here. Okay. 
Um, oh, we hit the first break point, so I continue down to here. All right. So, um, okay, so that, that, was, that was the basics for structure. I mean, that's all there is to them. You can create them. They have fields, and then you can assign values to the fields, and then you can read them out um, using the dot structure. So I didn't show an example of using those values in, like, a calculation, but like we did before, you know, I, I could use the values of a field to do arithmetic calculations, or I did show some examples of getting the fields and outputting them to the C out stream. So, um, all right, so... Um, uh, Slightly more complex, more interesting topic. Um, you can pass uh, structures to functions, so they can be parameters to functions, just like arrays can be parameters to functions. But unlike arrays, uh, you can pass structures by value or by reference. Okay, so remember in C plus plus and in C. When you pass an array, it's always passed by reference. You don't have, uh, you don't have a choice. So it doesn't copy the, the array. Uh, it just uh, sends in uh, the base address. It sends in a reference to the array. But for um, uh, functions, you can pass it in either. And, and the default is just like a, um, a, a simple variable. So if you pass in a, um, a, a structure, um, it will be passed in by value by default unless you specify that you want to pass it in by reference instead. So I've got two functions in this example code, set, uh, set house style and set house price. The first one passes it in by, um, um, by, um, by value, okay, it just passes in a copy, right? So let's go look at those two functions that are up at the top here. So um, set house tile is, is, is kind of a setter function. You have to pass in a house type structure. And since we don't specify the, that ampersand to make it a reference pa parameter, we're passing it in by value. So we're passing in a copy and we pass it a style. So this is actually a, a buggy uh, setter method. It, it, uh, so if you set the style to the new style that you pass in, uh, it will set it uh, inside of this function, but if you look at the, re the, the, the caller after you return, uh, it won't have affected the, the structure that you passed in, okay? So let, let's step over and look at that. So, um, so here, um, I'm going to call the function. So my house currently has the value of... Um, um, oh, I, I guess I didn't print it out. So, uh, so we set... The, the value for the style to be country, a country house for my house. So if we call set house style with tutor, I'm going to just step over it. Uh, now I'll show you again, you know, so some practice with the debugger. The debugger is your, is your friend. Try and uh, learn how to use it well. So if we step in, we're in set house style here. Um, and this is actually a copy of the house structure. So I'll step over. Uh, so we set house the, the copy of my house structure style to this new style, um, and we output it. So we see inside of the function that the house style is tutor now. Um, but if we keep stepping, we'll return. And after, now if I look at my original house, though, nothing happened to it. So uh, it didn't get affected by this assignment that happened inside of the function. So if we step over that, we see that, that my house uh, style is still country, what it were originally was, okay? So you can pass things in by, by value to functions. Uh, you can pass structures in by value to functions. But you can also pass them in by reference, just like a, a simple variable. Okay, so set house price. Uh, let's step into it. Uh, does the same thing for the price, uh, but we're passing in my house by reference, okay? So we'll step in. Here's uh, set house price. Uh, pretty much the same kind of looking function, except we're going to be setting the price member field, and we're passing house in by reference. So we're actually passing um, not a copy of it, but a, a reference to the to the same um, structure. So if we step over here, set the price and output, we see that the new price is, of this house is two hundred thousand dollars because we just set it. It was one hundred and twenty thousand, one hundred twenty-five thousand uh, before we called the function. I should have shown that, but that's okay. Um, and then when we return, uh, we will see the, those changes in my house now. So this this is a a good setter function. It actually does change the uh, the value of, of the price that we were trying to set there. So the price is two hundred thousand. Um, uh, uh, now after we return, okay. So that, that's the basics of using a struct um, to a uh, function. Um, and then a final thing, so, I mean, uh, 
using structures and arrays together is very useful. So now that you have those two tools, uh, if you didn't have them from programming too or didn't do a lot of practice with them, this is now beginning to give us enough tools that we can start to build realistic, more complex uh, applications you know, with structures and um, arrays. Okay. So first of all, uh, I'll just show having a, an array of my house type structure. Okay. So, so here's, here's like that. So instead of an array of integers, I've got an array of house types. Um, I'll create an array of 100 house types. So again, if I was building a real estate application and I needed to keep a database of house listings, I would have to have something like this. You know, I have to have enough um, uh, a memory, a big enough database, so I can hold multiple houses, and, and you know, hopefully, have a bigger real estate um, uh, office. I get more than 100 listings, but uh, anyway, we'll start off with 100. Um, and in this case, I'm just showing. Oh, so here's how you would um, actually um, um, access the member function. So, so the the name of this array is called house database. Uh, every um, uh, item in the array is of a house type so I can use uh, I can use the array indexing to get a particular house type and then you use the dot uh, syntax to access a particular member so all of my house all 100 houses I'm just initializing them to be of ranch style giving it a uh, house number so each one will have a house number that's the same as there as the index in the array and setting the initial price of the house to hundred thousand dollars okay so I better stop stepping or else I'll have to step through that a hundred times so I'll sort of break point here and we'll continue on um, and we'll hit it here and 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 here you know so, so we were using that to, um, uh, to to write data into the house database of array variable um, and here we'll read values out of the house database array variable so uh, I'll step over so I'm going to get the set the, the house at, at index 75 um, and get those values out and display them on again on C out on my standard output. So um, so yeah, in, in fact, you know, um, it, it, the style was ranch. The house name or the house address was house number 75, and the price was set to $100,000 um, as you know we expected from. Um, looking at um, this can, this uh, this loop here where we were initializing just those three member um, things. Um, okay, fine. And as a final thing, um, it's also possible and very useful to have an array of items be a member of a struct. Okay, so uh, I've got uh, a, a different struct here to illustrate this. So instead of the house type, we've got a structure type called a list type. All right. So if you go up into the code, just above the, um, um, just above the um, uh, the main function, um, there's the uh, the definition for the list type. It's another structure. The name is list type. It's got two member items in it. It's got a simple integer which holds the size. Um, it's got an array as the second member. So the the um, array called item is is an array of, of size 100. It holds 100 integers. Okay. So this is the beginning of of, of how we're going to create abstract data types um, in C++ and in this class. Okay. So um, th th this this data type is pretty useful. So now instead of like we did before when we were talking about arrays in the previous video, where where I said that. To pass an array into a function, it's best practice to pass the size of the array um, and then the array items as, as two parameters to the function. So now, you know, if, if we're going to be using this list, we can just pass in lists, uh, list types to functions because we already saw that we could pass structures into arrays. So I might have something like a function to initialize a list type that takes just one of these list types um, as the first parameter. Um, and some other parameters like the number of items that we want to initialize in the list, that's what the size is, and the value that we want to initialize every item in the list to. Okay, um, so uh, let me go back down here and, and show some examples of that. So uh, I'll step into the initializer. So we created uh, one of these uh, structures of my list. Remember, it has two members, the size and an array are members inside of it. So um, um, maybe I won't step through the initialize here, but but this function all, all the, it has the effect. So initially, there's nothing in the array or the size. So this has the the effect of initializing the first ten values in my list to have the value of 25. 
Uh, and then again, so notice the syntax is a little bit different because it's it's not that I have an array of structures. It's I have a structure whose one member inside of it called item is an array. So to access that array inside of the my list structure, I do my list dot the member name item. And since item is an array of integers, I have to index that to set a particular uh, uh, item. Okay. So I, I initialize the first 10 items to 25, but I change item at index 3 to be 32 and the item at index 5 to be um, 18. Okay. Um, so we'll step over and do those. And uh, let's step in here. So here's another function. This function displays the, the contents of my list here. Um, and it just takes um, a list type as its one and only parameter. So let me step into that. All right, so, so I can see show you the definition of the uh, display list function, okay? So um, it takes, the, it takes uh, a list type as a reference, uh, which was actually a mistake here, uh, but I should fix that because we don't change, we, we, this is just displaying it, so it should, the, this function should only be reading the values out of the list. So uh, um, I really meant that to be um, 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 a... Uh, a value type, or, or no, um, as we talked about last time, it would have been, it been better for me to declare this to be constant, um, which is an indication that I, even though I'm passing it by um, reference, I'm not going to be actually changing the contents of the list, okay? So in your, in your first programming assignment, I, I ask you to do something like that um, um, for an array instead of a, a structure, but... Um, um, anyway, so I mean, all this function does is all the item, it displays all the items on standard output, okay? So I'll just break here so we can see the result. Um, so you can see that the item, the list had 10 items in it. So that's the first thing that we printed out was, you know, we're accessing the size member of this list type to display how many items were in it. Um, and then the loop um, um, displays those 10 items from the array that's in the structure. So it was, we initialized everything 25, except we set two of the, the, the items in the array to be 32 and 18, respectively. So those got, this is just showing that those got changed, okay? So, um, all right, so there's, there's some other, other example functions here, but I've already got a bit longer than I wanted to. So, um, so yeah. I mean, those are the basics of a structure. Uh, this was important because um, um, we're going to next be looking at, a, at, at defining classes in here, and classes are really the same as structures, okay, but with a little bit of, of extra, you know, so, so some extra kinds of abilities or some extra concepts, okay? So um, anyway, that's it for this video. I hope that was helpful, um, and I will see you in the next video.